So now we want to look at the problem of approximating a function using least square approximation or optimization. So now this is this is as I said in my last lecture, this is different from what we have looked till now. We have been looking at interpolation and interpolation we wanted the approximate polynomial or the, the polynomial approximate polynomial ultimately to pass through every point. Now the difference is that I want a lower order polynomial which may not pass through every point but which is a best fit in some sense. Okay, So let me first formulate the problem and then uh, we will move on to necessary and sufficient conditions for optimality uh, and then we will move back to solution. So before we need to do some extra work in between before we actually solve the problem. So the problem at hand is Now why least squares, why not something else and we have been using least squares probably in your undergraduate uh, program in uh, experimental methods or fitting curves and fitting lines and so on. Why why we use least squares, why do not we use uh, sum of absolute error and why do not we use, yeah 2 norm has some special, 2 norm after teaching you about norms, you are telling me only 2 norm defines distance? No. So 2 norm also defines angle, I mean or not, not that 2 norm defines angle, the definition of angle comes free with the 2 norm, right. So you buy 2 norm, you get angle free, okay. So <laughs> that is the advantage, you do not get orthogonality, you do not get all those definitions when you use 1 norm, infinite norm. One could formulate a problem of instead of least square fitting, fitting uh, a function in the absolute norm or fitting a function in infinite norm, one can very much do that but 2 norm has something special. Now we will go to see what, why it is special but before that we have to do some work. So let me again restate the problem, my problem was that I have this points here, they need not be equispace, there are some points here where I have this function u z and I know values of this function at different points. So this, this is a function defined over some domain, you can have it 0 to 1, does not matter or it can be from some a to b. I know values of this function at different locations. So so this is the this is the dependent variable u i is equal to u at the independent variable z i where z i goes from uh, or where i goes from 1 to up to n okay i goes from 1 to n now the main difference is that i want to fit now a polynomial which is not of nth order or n n minus 1th order, I want to fit a polynomial which is of a lower order, okay. So a typical problem is that I want to fit a polynomial say p m z, I want to fit a polynomial p m z which is alpha 0 plus alpha 1 z plus alpha 2 z up to alpha m z to power m okay alpha m z to power m i want to fit a polynomial of this form okay now i cannot say earlier in interpolation we said that the polynomial value or the polynomial should pass through every point i cannot say that now okay what i'm going to say now is that this error I am going to define error which is u i that is u i minus p 
m z i okay which is nothing but u z i minus p m z i okay this error has to be small in some sense but this error is not just at one point you have error defined at i goes from 1 to up to m okay now you have a vector of errors not one error right you have n points this n could be large number of points n could be 100 n could be 1000 okay i have large number of data points so i know the function value at large number of points but i want to fit a polynomial of order 2 or order 3 okay classic example from chemical engineering uh, i would give here is uh, cp as a function of temperature we fit cp as some a plus bt plus ct square okay or sometimes we fit a plus bt plus ct square plus d t cube there is no unique way of choosing depending upon what range of cp values and what range of temperature you are considering okay what the choice of polynomial would differ okay you may have 100 values of cp okay you may have 100 values of cp so i may have you know uh, cp 1 at temperature 1 cp 2 at temperature 2 and so on so cp n at temperature n so these are different measurement points i know cp at large number of temperatures okay so if i actually if i actually try to fit into this i will have problem okay the problem is that none of this none of this uh, you know there are more number of equations than the unknowns okay so now we have to do something about this okay i goes from here i goes from 1 to this is only ah yeah here i goes 1 to n correct i goes from 1 to n not 1 to m the the number of coefficients here are m plus 1 okay but i goes from 1 to n okay so now the trouble is trouble is that this when you when you write this equation it is not exact okay there is actually one more term missing here so let us concentrate right now on the quadratic equation cubic equation will worry about later look at this quadratic equation what i have to say that cp is equal to this plus an error cp is equal to this plus error this is not exact representation this is an approximation this e is the approximation error okay why why can i fit why am i allowed to fit a polynomial because pierce class theorem applies continuous function can be approximated by a polynomial function that's why i'm fitting a polynomial okay now but this is not exact so there is an error here so actually actually if i take this data points and i start writing i start writing cp1 is equal to a plus b t1 square plus c t1 uh, sorry c t1 plus uh, b t1 plus c t1 square plus error 1 right so there is some error this is not exact this will give you most of the variation but this is not exactly equal to this there is some error here so cp2 is equal to a plus b t2 plus c t2 square plus e2 cp3 is equal to a plus b t3 plus c t3 square plus e3 and so on i can write this equations up to cpn is equal to a plus b t3 plus c t3 uh, sorry t n 
टी एन स्क्वेर प्लस ई एन सो दीज आर माई इक्वेशन नाउ दीज आर माई इक्वेशन कैन आई सॉल्व दीज इक्वेश इज देर अ प्रॉब्लम हियर हाउ मेनी वेरिएबल्स एंड हाउ मेनी इक्वेश हाउ मेनी इक्वेश आई हैव राइट नाउ आई हैव एन इक्वेश हाउ मेनी वेरिएबल्स आई हैव सो इक्वेश एन इक्वेश इज इक्वल टू एन नंबर ऑफ इक्वेश इज इक्वल टू एन इक्वल टू नंबर ऑफ डेटा पॉइंट हाउ मेनी वेरिएबल्स एन एन प्लस थ्री राइट सो वेरिएबल्स इज इक्वल टू एन प्लस एन प्लस थ्री वॉट आर द एन वेरिएबल्स ई वन ई टू ओके एंड प्लस ए बी एंड C. So there are three unknowns A, B, C. Plus there are unknowns. These are the errors which are unknown. Okay, all these errors are unknown. Now the trouble is, how do I solve this? There are infinite solutions to this problem. Why? If I if I choose A, B, C in one particular way. Okay, if I choose A, B, C in one particular way. If I fix A, B, C by some means. Okay, then I will get one one value for. E one, E two, E three. Because once I once I specify A, B, C, I'll have n equations in n unknowns. I can solve them. Okay. Trouble is, how do I fix A, B, and C? Differentiate. Why? Sigma of all the errors. Not a great idea. Sigma is is it a norm? Sigma of errors is it a norm? so it might happen that all the errors might sum up to zero so that means is that the solution why only square why not absolute so i could formulate my problem now i need to generate three more equations to complete the problem i have n plus 3 variables i have n uh equations to make the problem exact i need to i need to generate three more equations what are these equations okay so now let's look at how do i formulate the problem i can formulate this problem in multiple ways i can formulate this problem i can formulate an index so i can say an index phi which is e1 square plus e2 square plus let me call this two index E n square, okay, which uh, I can write this as E transpose E, okay, where this E is a vector of E one, E two, E n, okay. So I can propose. that find a b c such that you minimize this i minimize this phi 2 with respect to a b c some of the square of errors is as small as possible okay so i try to get a polynomial such that sum of the square of errors see this is individual error in each equation i am just squaring it and summing it up okay i want to find out that value which gives me minimum sum of the square of errors okay minimum sum of the square of errors so this is this is one way of formulating the problem i still do not know whether doing this is going to give me three additional equations i have to generate them so there is another way of formulating the problem this is not the only way i could say that you know i'll formulate this phi 1 i'll say that you know uh mod e1 plus mod e2 somebody might say that why why this why this sum of the square of errors why not sum of the absolute errors nobody stops you from doing that you can so this will be nothing but one norm of e 
what is this? 2 norm of E square, right? If E is a vector, it is 2 norm of E square, this is 1 norm of E, E vector, okay? So, I want to minimize instead of minimizing this phi 2, I could pose the problem as minimize phi 1, right? And somebody else might say, well, I do not believe in this, I, I would like to minimize phi infinity, which is max over i, minimize the maximum error, minimize the maximum deviation. Okay. So, instead of minimizing phi 2, I could choose to minimize phi 1, I could choose to minimize phi infinity, this is infinite norm of error, error vector, this is nothing but uh, any one of them is fine, any one of them is fine. Okay. Now, the question is how do I, how do I solve this problem? Now, first of all, you should notice that this is an optimization problem. You want to minimize some of the square of errors with respect to these parameters. Okay. There is something different than what you have done in your undergraduate optimization or minimization. In undergraduate course, you normally study, most of you, maybe some of you have done advanced things, but uh, most of you study maximizing or minimizing a function of one variable. Here, you have a function of three variables. Okay. So, we need to generalize what we have studied in undergraduate, how do I come up with minimization of a function which is multi-dimensional, okay. which is multi-dimensional. So, what is this function? I will generalize this, I will generalize this problem here. Okay. Now, let us push this to the background, we will come back to this CP versus temperature business little later. Uh, let us look at an abstract problem now. My abstract problem, my abstract problem is I want to minimize an objective function. Why just look at three variables? I look at general n variables. Okay. I have a scalar function. What is this function? Phi 1, phi 2, phi infinity. What are these functions? These are scalar functions. These are scalar functions. Norm is a scalar function, right? You always get, uh, but uh, I need not always define an objective which is coming through norm, there could be other ways in some other problem. So, in general, I am worried about, I am worried about uh, minimizing a function, let us say phi x from R n to R, phi x is a function phi x is a function from R n to R, from n dimension to 1 dimensions. So, this is my objective function. Some objective of a vector x. So, x is a vector which is n dimensional. In this case, in this case, x is nothing but the error vector. I am now generalizing, I am abstracting the problem. I do not no longer want to just work with errors, modeling errors. I want to just go and generalize this and say in general, actually this is a special case of a problem in which I have a scalar function mapping from n dimension to 1 dimension. I want to minimize and I want to find out minimize or maximize, minimize with respect to x1, x2. Uh, okay, let us let us take here R m to R x m. I want to minimize, uh, I want to minimize this objective function phi x with respect to x 1, x 2, x m. Okay? There is one, 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 one problem. Now, do not confuse, do not confuse this x with this e n. Okay? Uh, if I said that earlier, there was a small error. What is x here? When I am generalizing from here to here, what is x? Is the unknown parameters. What is x? A, B, C. Okay. So, in this case, in this case, m would be 3. In this particular case, m would be 3. I want to minimize this function phi of x 
okay with respect to x1 x2 x3 xm in this case in this particular cp problem x would be nothing but a b and c in this particular problem x would be a b and c i want to minimize some function phi x okay be be it one norm infinite norm two norm whatever i want to minimize some function phi x with respect to x where in this particular case x happens to be a b c okay how to solve this problem i need some background definitions here so well why i am just talking about minimization problem because if you have a maximization problem if you want to maximize phi of x it's same as minimizing minus phi of x so i can just talk about minimization problem so it includes maximization we don't have to worry separately about uh, maximization problem okay now first concept that we need to know is a global minimum a global minimum is a point say x equal to x star x equal to x star is called as a global minimum if phi x star is less than phi x you call this phi x star to be a global minimum phi x star to be a global actually uh, equality is not there so you call it to be a global minimum okay if if you take any other value so what is the global minimum for abc there is some special value of abc for which this particular objective function will assume the minimum value there is no other value of abc for which you will get a smaller sum of the square of errors okay if that exists that you can reach then that is called as a global minimum okay now uh, when you do optimization you may not be able to reach a global minimum it may happen that you start doing a search and then you go to a local minimum okay go to a local minimum imagine that you know you are uh, standing on a mountain and then uh, there are multiple valleys okay you might reach a valley which is not the you know which is not a global minimum okay which is just uh, a local minimum and then so we also have to worry about local minimum so in local minimum we don't talk about for every x in rn okay we talk about some neighborhood some neighborhood of a particular point okay so in some neighborhood so some epsilon neighborhood we have defined neighborhood earlier we can think of a ball okay some ball around x bar okay if you can show that phi x bar is less than any other any other x in that neighborhood then x bar will be called as a local minimum here x star will be called global minimum because anywhere you go in the space you cannot get a value of x for which phi will be smaller okay the smallest value of phi is obtained at the global minimum and a local minimum is like a local minima okay so you know in one dimensional it's easier to draw so in a simple one dimensional case uh, this would be you know if you have a function uh, phi of x versus x so which is so this is my global minimum but this is a local minimum okay so this point for this function is a global minimum whereas this is a this is a local minimum and this is global minimum so in some neighborhood in some neighborhood this is the minimum take any point in this neighborhood okay you cannot get value of phi less than this but that is not the case if you look at much larger domain okay so there might be some other value where you get much lower the conditions that we are going to derive now okay uh, are pertaining to the local minimum we are not we cannot actually derive general conditions for global minimum and in general problem optimization problem uh, what we what we find is typically a local minimum 
if it happens to be global minimum in some cases great i mean no you have uh, achieved the what you wanted to do but in many situations you do optimization by numerical search and then you the solution depends upon your initial guess if you are far away from the global minimum okay you may not reach there so you, when you do trial and error approach to uh, you know arrive at the solution you might be starting with a guess here and the solution might hit this minimum and you know your numerical method will declare that you have reached a minimum and if you happen to give a if you happen to give a initial guess somewhere here maybe you will reach this point okay numerical methods you cannot predict you might even go here and get into this so hard to predict what will happen but uh, likely that if you are here you might reach this global minimum the conditions that we are going to derive are for local minimum what are the necessary conditions for a point to be a local minimum what is the sufficient condition for a point to be a local minimum that's what i am going to derive now okay now to qualify a point to be a local or a global minimum i need some more definitions see what was what was the key thing when you talked about a uh, minimum of a single variable function first was that the derivative at this point of phi with respect to x becomes zero there is no change locally okay so the the derivative is tangent which is parallel to x axis okay that is the key thing about so the derivative is zero that was the first thing how do i extend this to the multi dimensional case now i have a variable now i have objective function which is function of m unknowns not just one unknown so i should derive an equivalent condition uh second thing is so well then i have to make an assumption that this phi is differentiable okay one norm and infinite norm there's a trouble they are not differentiable functions two norm it's a differentiable function x transpose x some of the squares differentiable function okay second thing is what qualified this point to be a minimum and this point to be a maximum second derivative so second derivative when it was positive it was minimum second derivative when it was negative it was a maximum now in this particular case if phi x phi x is a differentiable or if it is twice differentiable function then the first derivative of this with respect to x is going to be a vector and the second derivative of this with respect to x is going to be a matrix so i need some more additional structure which will help me qualify a point to be maximum or minimum okay now this is where you need to define matrices which are certain special properties so what is the special property definiteness i now need to define matrices which are positive definite or negative definite okay so now before i proceed i'll define a positive definite matrix and a negative definite matrix and an indefinite matrix if you understand this geometric connections of positive definiteness indefiniteness and then you know it will make much more sense later when you use these these concepts okay otherwise many times you know in a coles on linear algebra they are introduced not by connecting it to geometry they are just introduced by saying a positive definite matrix is one which has all eigen values positive but why why do i need this animal which has all positive eigen values okay it's not clear to us this is where it will become clear why do i need such funny matrix well it's not really funny it happens to be very nice matrix it helps us in many many ways and it's going to help us throughout the course in many ways okay so we have this first definition is positive definite matrix so when is a matrix positive definite right now i'm just digressing from the main theme i'm just going into a little bit of linear algebra may appear disconnected so if i have a matrix a this a is a n cross n matrix we are talking about real valued matrices right now so if x transpose ax is greater than 0 for any x not equal to 0 okay 
and x belongs to m dimensional space we are looking at m dimension or oh not n, n cross n this should be m cross n m cross n because we are talking about phi phi x where x is m dimensional so m cross n very very important most important word here is for any x for any x even if you find one x for which this is equal to 0 and or less than 0 the matrix is not positive definite. So, this is the fundamental definition of positive definiteness ok. Give me any vector in the space ok x transpose a x is greater than 0 when x is not equal to 0. When will this be equal to 0? Only when x is equal to 0 ok remember that. Well, there is one more one more matrix that you probably have studied in your undergraduate is positive semi definite matrix. When do you call positive semi definite matrix? So, if if this becomes condition becomes x transpose a x is greater than or equal to 0 for any x. So, there are some vectors x for which this will be equal to 0 this will happen when a matrix is singular think about it when a matrix is singular its columns are linearly dependent null space is not 0 and you will get some uh, well this this basic definition translates to eigenvalues being positive we will look at that a little later. But in this case if you just change from the strict inequality to you know this greater than or equal to 0 it becomes positive semi definite a will be positive semi definite ok. What about negative definite matrix just so this is this is positive semi definite ok. So, negative definite negative definite is x transpose a x is strictly less than 0 for any x that belongs to R m ok for any x that belongs to R m and x is not equal to 0. So, non 0 vector and any non 0 vector you give me x transpose a x will be less than 0 and it is called as a negative definite matrix ok. And the fourth one is of course, negative semi definite. So, this is x transpose a x is less than or equal to 0 for any x belonging to R m. So, this is negative semi definiteness, this is negative semi definite ok. So, this is just the background work that I need to proceed further ok. Well, the necessary condition for optimality is something that I would like to uh, quickly derive in the class though every step I am not going to write because it is there in the notes. I will just give you outline of the proof how it is done. So, the necessary condition is given by this theorem. So, necessary condition for optimality well, first of all we assume that phi x is twice differentiable this is twice differentiable that is what we assume first ok then only we can proceed. So, if you want to know where this appears in the notes I do not know how many of you are carrying notes it is on page 80 it is on page 80 it is it is in the appendix section 8.2 this talks about uh, now to do arguments about uh, uh, you know local optimality I am going to use Taylor series approximation ok. Taylor series approximation is the bulwark of you know is the uh, one of the main tools that we use to prove many many things. So, for a point the, the statement of the theorem formal statement is given here I am just stating the main result. So, that is if x is equal to x bar is to qualify as a minimum or a maximum or optimum we do not we do not know what it is 
to be to be precise it a stationary point okay it could be a minimum or a maximum or it could be neither of them it depends upon uh, some more conditions so the gradient of phi with respect to x that is do phi by do x1 do phi by do x2 this should be equal to if phi is a twice differentiable function okay what we can prove is that the necessary condition for optimality is that the first derivative of phi with respect to each of the variables not xn sorry xm we are working with this remind me we are working in m dimensional space okay with respect to xm should be equal to 0 in the specific problem for cp okay it will be what is the specific uh, condition for cp value uh, problem so it will be do phi by it will be do phi by do a in a specific problem for cp it will be do phi by do a do phi by do b and do phi by do c this should be equal to 0 0 0 okay this should be equal to 0 0 0 so this particular equation actually is the necessary condition for optimality well i started by saying for the cp problem we need three extra equations the other three extra equations do phi by do a equal to 0 do phi by do b equal to 0 do phi by do c equal to 0 in general if there are m such parameters with respect to which we want to optimize then we have m equations here right we have m equations coming from the first order derivative to be exactly equal to 0 at the optimum point okay now the proof of this so the proof of this actually goes by i think uh, contradiction what we do is uh, we assume that uh, you, know, you are allowed to vary a particular variable only in one direction keeping all the other values constant so i just want to perturb say along x1 or x2 okay and then uh, we assume that uh, you know that this condition does not hold okay we assume that this condition does not hold but the point is a minimum okay and what you see is that uh, if you make an assumption that the derivative is not zero and the point is a minimum you lead to a contradiction okay these two cannot be true okay so the way it is done is you know you you write the proof either the full proof you should read here in the notes but the way this is done is that I can write phi x bar plus delta x. So I take a small perturbation. Let's say x bar is the minimum. Let's say x bar is the local minimum. X bar is the local minimum. Okay. I can write this as f x bar using Taylor series expansion. Okay. Plus i going from 1 to m rho phi by do x i d x i plus the residual term at x bar delta x this is the second order residual term okay now if i say that uh, if i say that the perturbation is only along one direction let's say we we will put this as small delta x here delta x i so let's assume that only delta x i is not equal to 0 but delta x1 equal to delta x2 is equal to delta x i minus 1 is equal to delta x i plus 1 is equal to delta x m all are 0 but only one of them is not 0 let's make that assumption 
okay all all other delta x is are zero i am choosing to perturb only from x bar i am choosing to perturb only xi ith variable you have you have done this kind of thing have you if you have programmed numerical jacobian you are keeping all the variables constant just perturbing one one value right we did this in the programming okay the same thing i am just perturbing one variable at a time okay now so the question is phi x bar plus delta x minus phi x bar okay so this is dominated by do phi by do x i so this difference okay this difference is dominated by this partial derivative times if you take delta x i to be very very small the second order term here will be insignificant this difference is dominated by okay now tell me what should happen what should happen if x bar is a minimum and if i move away from it what should happen to objective function it should increase so what should happen if this this should be always greater than 0 it should always be greater than 0 any movement i make okay now let's take the situation that this gradient is not 0 okay let's say the situation this gradient is negative okay this gradient is negative i can choose a delta x which is small negative value such that this will become multiplication will become positive if multiplication becomes positive it contradicts the fact that x bar is a minimum if i can make the see if i can make this multiplication positive it will contradict the fact that this is a minimum so because if you move away what should happen this should always remain see whichever way i go from the minimum if you are just imagine if you are in a valley okay whichever way you whichever way you go from the minimum point you know your height increases you, you it will never decrease okay now uh, if the local gradient is let's say let's say this is let's say this is positive this phi is positive then i can choose a delta x which is positive x i and make this positive which means that this minus this is positive which means x bar is not a minimum no you have to argue like that suppose this is negative suppose this is negative then i can choose delta x i to be negative so multiplication will become positive which means this difference will become positive which means x bar cannot be minimum you know so you have to argue in a in a way that Uh, well did i this should be one minute i think the argument i have to repeat uh, <laughs> so this see if i move away from x bar the value should value should increase okay value should increase okay now uh, if this is if this is negative i can choose delta x i positive okay if i choose delta x i positive if this is negative if this is positive multiplication is negative which means i can move in one particular way and reduce this further which means x bar is not a minimum which means x bar is not a minimum i made a wrong argument earlier now argue other way around if this is if this is positive i can choose delta x i negative if i choose delta x i negative this will become negative okay so i can further reduce by moving away so the next bar is not a minimum so you can show this that for each each variable you can argue like this so only way this point can be a minimum is if this derivative is zero okay because if derivative is non zero you'll be able to move a little bit and go further down which which cannot happen if it is a minimum okay so only way this point can be a minimum is this derivative is zero okay so this is the necessary condition you look at the proof here uh to derive the sufficient condition what we do is we look at the second derivative the second derivative here is del square phi so del square phi would be 
the so called hessian matrix the hessian matrix is given by so hessian in this case will be a m cross m matrix oh i'm keep writing n it's m we are working in m dimensional space so this is m here okay yeah so this is this is uh, m here so we have this we have to look at the hessian why we have to look at the hessian okay let's go back to this equation here we said that only way x bar is a minimum is the all derivatives are are zero if all derivatives are zero this term vanishes right when i do taylor series expansion all derivatives are zero at, at x bar so the first derivative term will vanish okay then we have to look at the second derivative part okay so then i'll write this here as okay so at the optimum the first derivative is zero so this is governed by phi x bar plus delta x transpose half into del square x phi delta x what how, how what will govern the local behavior of the function in the neighborhood of the optimum point see the first derivative is zero so look at the second derivative second derivative is delta x transpose phi x this this hessian matrix this is the hessian into okay what should happen if you move away from x bar it should it should increase okay when will it increase if this matrix computed at so this particular matrix this particular matrix is computed at x is equal to x bar so we are computing this at x equal to x bar okay the first derivative at x equal to x bar is zero i look at the second derivative get to get an idea about what is the local behavior so if second derivative this hessian if this hessian is positive definite or positive semi definite okay i can move away from the point but the objective function value will not decrease okay it will only increase such a point will be a minimum point such a point will be a minimum point so if del square x of phi computed at x bar if this is positive definite or positive semi definite then then x equal to x bar is a minimum okay what if this matrix is indefinite what is the meaning of indefiniteness for some x for some x this is positive for some x this is negative okay so in some directions the function will decrease in some directions the function will increase you know saddle point the derivative is zero but in some direction function decreases some direction function increases okay if this matrix is indefinite okay then i cannot say anything about this point this is not a maximum nor a minimum okay so if this happens to be positive definite it's a minimum if this matrix happens to be negative definite it's a maximum okay if this hessian matrix is negative semi definite or negative definite then it's a then it's a maximum otherwise uh, if it is positive de definite or positive semi, semi definite it's a minimum and if a matrix hessian matrix is neither positive definite nor negative definite it's an indefinite matrix okay so sometimes this multiplication is positive sometimes this is negative then you know then the point is neither a minimum nor a maximum it's a saddle point okay now this this particular this is called these these two are sufficient conditions for to qualify a point to be optimum so first thing is that gradient should be equal to zero second thing is hessian should be either positive definite for a minimum or it should be negative definite for a maximum and uh, then we can qualify a point to be an optimum point so this is generalization of the result that you know from one dimension this now in the next lecture will apply to the specific problem of polynomial approximations okay